Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar, Collecting Intersection Data and Utilizing Detection, Detection Systems with iTerris. My name is Connor, and I'll be your moderator. Before we get going today, just have a few uh, housekeeping things I want to run through quickly. All phone lines are muted, so if you have any questions, go ahead and use the chat feature within your GoToWebinar toolbar. Presentation will last about 40 minutes or so, which will give us time for questions at the end. And by attending today's presentation, you are eligible to earn TARP points through IMSA. For those of you who provided your IMSA number during the registration process, Western Systems will go ahead and handle that submission for you. If you'd like a copy of today's slides, they are available for download within the handout section on the GoToWebinar toolbar. And lastly, uh, this webinar will be made available on demand for you to view anytime. You'll get a follow-up email tomorrow with a link to do so. All right, with the housekeeping out of the way, I'm excited to introduce today's presenter, Jason Spencer, Territory Manager at Western Systems. Jason, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Connor. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this edition of our webinar series. Uh, I'm sure we have some repeat viewers as well as some new viewers. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, uh, we're trying to keep in touch with our customers with what would be a pretty non-traditional way of doing things. Uh, but with our current situation, these webinars have been a great way uh, for us to continue to share information with our customers about our products and the services we offer. So again, I really appreciate you guys all tuning in. I hope you're taking this opportunity to enjoy some extra time with your family uh, and you know, making the best of the situation. So a little bit about us at Western Systems. Uh, we are still open for business. We have separated out our manufacturing into different shifts to be able to comply with social distancing uh, without sacrificing any of our product production deadlines. We consider ourselves very lucky, lucky to continue production as we have heard other companies in the industry haven't been as fortunate with international manufacturing facilities being temporarily closed down completely. So we're happy to say, uh, knock on wood, we haven't experienced any slowdowns with our supply chains and we're able to continue to supply you guys with all the stuff you need from us. Uh, with that said, again, a little background on Western Systems. We've been around since 2001, so we're quickly approaching our 20-year uh, anniversary. About six years ago, we moved into our new headquarters in Everett, Washington, where we've grown from about a five-person uh, crew to over 40 employees in a new 30,000-square-foot building. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, at the very beginning, uh, we were mostly just making traffic signal cabinets for the state of Washington. But since then, we've expanded our production offerings to include everything you might need at the intersection. Uh, at our facility, we have an in-house TMC operations center. This is a great place for us to showcase our equipment, but it's also a really good way for us to VPN no matter where uh, us territory managers are at throughout our territories to help support our customers and also show them some of the latest, greatest in the equipment that we offer. And it's a really great way to train them as well. Uh, we've quickly become one of the largest manufacturers in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we now cover Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, uh, all of California and Alaska. Our core business units are Siemens ITS control systems. Uh, we've got the iTerris detection hardware and software. Uh, we still make the best cabinets in the country, and we continue to be a customer service oriented business with a focus on providing complete service and support for everything we manufacture and sell. So today I'm gonna to be going over a general overview of almost everything iTerris has to offer uh, with a focus on some of their detection technologies. iTerris has an international installation base quickly approaching 200,000 installations in uh, 40 countries. ITERIS has covered all the bases when it comes to their detection hardware uh, with their video and radar detection units and then a new unique hybrid offering, uh, all of which I'm going to kind of dive into today. So who is ITERIS? Uh, ITERIS is an American company based out of Santa Ana, California. ITERIS was established in 2004 and was formed from a Odenix Inc. or Odetix Inc., uh, which was founded in 1969 in Am Anaheim, California. Odetics originally served as a business incubator for technology companies and worked with aerospace manufacturers providing digital tape recorders. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Since 2004, iTerris has become the leading provider for uh, smart mobility infrastructure and management solutions, leveraging cloud technologies to help mobile transportation operate more safely, efficiently, and sustainably. Uh, iTerris has changed the industry with a vast amount of inventions and patents. Uh, just to name a few, they've fused multiple sensor data with the Vantage series of detectors. Uh, their video data analytics system can, can differentiate pedestrians and cyclists through machine vision technology and their new smart cycle bike indicator, which is used to notify cyclists that they've been detected at the intersections. Uh, Terrace is constantly evolving the technology that makes our roads safer and more efficient, progressing the industry as, as a whole, just every step of the way. Uh, as a distri distributor of iTerris' products, I'd say that iTerris has become an industry leader due to their close relationship with the boots and the ground workers who are installing and managing their hardware, as well as a thorough understanding of the needs of the engineers who are employing the information gathered from this equipment to do their jobs better. 
My terrorist video and radar detection can easily perform any of the functions that you'd get through inductive loops while being far easier to install and maintain and a lower total cost of ownership. On top of basic functionality, iTerrace detection is able to provide higher count accuracy, including turning movement counts. Uh, this data can then be fed into the iTerrace's SPM software for further utilization by those engineers. iTerrace detection comes in a variety of flavors based on what you're trying to accomplish and the geometry of your intersection. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about <clears throat> with the build of iTerrace is their wide dynamic range imaging capabilities. Uh, this has solved an age-old uh, optical detection issue. So it's not uncommon for roadways to have high contrast lighting, usually due to buildings or trees along the side of the road. In the past, cameras would only process image information in medium lit areas, meaning portions of the roadways would, uh, that experience high contrast shading during certain times of the day would not be able to get any kind of accurate detection. It's like when you uh, take a picture of somebody with your iPhone and the sun's behind them, and when you actually look at the picture, they're just a silhouetted uh, shape, and all you can see is the brightness behind them. So iTerrace introduces WDR, which is, uh, allows the camera to essentially flatten the image by processing both the highlight and low light areas separately, then bringing them together, forming a complete clear picture of that area. Uh, the image on the left here shows what a standard camera would look like when it's placed inside of a parking garage. The light from the walkway outside being so bright is actually causing too high of contrast, making everything in the garage too dark to see. So when you apply WDR, you can actually see that it's taking the low contrast or the high contrast area and splitting up the bright portions of the image and the dark portions and combining them to give you a full picture of what's happening in the, in the entire image. So obviously when you're working with equipment installed over a roadway, you have to have dirt and grime in mind. Uh, iTerrace lenses aren't self-cleaning, but they use a superior debris repellent lens treatment. That's because they coat their lenses in a hydrophilic coating that absorbs debris and then uses UV light from the sun to break the debris down and then it's washed away by moisture, be it dew or rain, uh, keeping the image crystal clear. This reduces camera maintenance and ensures a low life cycle cost, needing fewer visits to clean the cameras. The Vantage Edge 2 processor is a key component in the family of, of Vantage video detection solutions. The module combines state-of-the-art technology with sophisticated algorithms to deliver dependable vehicle detection required for today's complex transportation systems. The Edge 2 processor features single or dual video inputs to maximize the configuration efficiencies for intersection control, highway monitoring, and ramp metering flow control applications. The Edge 2 processor was the first to include ped tracks and smart cycle, allowing users to get pedestrian and bicycle movements, detection, and counts. The processor module is com complemented by a multiple input, output, and extension modules that provide flexible and expandable solutions to meet the needs of the larger or more complex intersections. The Edge 2 processor module is, it's, and its associated expansion modules fit into a standard detector rack to simplify in installation and setup. And all the modules are designed as a simple and cost-effective replacement for inductive loop amplifier module configurations. Uh, the Edge 2 processor and all of its associated modules can be completely configured by using only a mouse and video monitor, so you're no longer gonna need like an expensive laptop or a PDA to get that job done. Vantage Edge Connect is an easy to use browser-based user interface that simplifies the management of the video streams. You've got the, Vantage, the Edge Connect Quad View Remote Communications module, and this provides both local and remote management of data and video over ethernet, which enables system operators to manage their Vantage video detection systems more efficiently and effectively by allowing the user to view real-time video and collected data from the field in their TMC. Uh, Vantage Edge Connect's advanced video compression ability mi minimizes bandwidth uses and is scal scalable to fit the bandwidth available at that intersection. So the data rates can go as low as 32 kilobytes, kilobits per second and as high as 7 megabits per second. So variable uh, video has variable frame rates between 5 and 30 frames per second, also allows the user to optimize streaming video to fit the application. So if you have an intersection that's using, let's say, uh, radio that doesn't have as much bandwidth, you can change the settings at, this, at the cabinet so that you're not going to overload that bandwidth. Vantage Next is iTerrace's next generation video detection platform that capitalizes on the latest technology. So the Vantage Next uses a powerful processor that enables future functional growth while maintaining proven iTerrace video detection performance and reliability. The architecture supports expanding ITS application and it easily integrates with existing and future technologies. Uh, the Vantage Next eliminates the use of the three conductor cable or the proprietary cables that you'll see in some other detection equipment and allows you just to use a Cat5 cable. Uh, this reduces the cost of the cabling and it's a lot easier to run to the cabinets and sensors. You know, conduit space is getting limited as more technology enters the intersections. So having something like this really helps with a, you know, the base level of, of just having your detection going. The CCU comes in two form factors. So you've got a 19-inch 1U rack mountable unit or a shelf unit. 
the uh, DVP or the dual video processor is placed into the detector rack. Uh, it's capable of processing information from two processors. It is a single slot processor with four output channels. And using the supplied patch cables, the DVPs connect to the four RJ45 ports right here at the front of the CCU. The DVPs share an output channel file allowing any zone to be assigned to any channel available in that CCU. The Vantage Next system also has a configuration tool that is compatible with Apple or Android devices. So this means the techs can set up the camera from their phone or their tablet. This is super helpful when you've got someone up in a bucket truck configuring four separate cameras, you know, all, most of them, three of them at least, being away from the, the cabinet. So the Vantage Radius <clears throat> is Iteris' radar detector, and that has stop bar detection as well as advanced detection up to 325 feet from the sensor. Uh, the radius eliminates occlusion and provides a deeper field of view, capturing all vehicle movements at the intersection. Uh, using radar and, and Iteris' enhanced detection algorithms ensures that the Vantage Radius can accurately detect vehicles and speeds as they approach the intersection, enabling the intersection to operate at its peak efficiency. The system is built on the Vantage Next platform and continues the Iteris tradition of ease of installation and simple configuration. The setup screen is really nice. It gives you a top-down view of the approach and it animates vehicles as they enter the detection zones, making it really easy to compare to what's actually happening at the road and validate that you've set it up properly. A big thing is included with the Vantage Radius sensor is a high-resolution digital camera that streams live video back to central management locations. So this provides agencies the ability to monitor and validate the detector's performance. This video stream can also be used in place of other surveillance cameras to stream live video to your traffic management center video wall. Uh, Iteris also has a video viewer app that they've made. This allows you access to the live video on an Apple or an Android smartphone. <clears throat> the Vector is an all-in-one vehicle detection sensor. So by co combining video and radar, the Vector is able to take full advantage of both worlds. Uh, the radar allows for advanced detection over 500 feet from the sensor, and it's not inhibited by lighting conditions or inclement weather, while the video allows for highly accurate stop bar detection uh, with bike and ped detection capabilities as well. The Vantage Next paired with the ve Vector is a one-of-kind of solution that provides both state-of-the-art video and advanced radar detection for maximum intersection performance and safety. Uh, combined with Iteris's leading all-weather stop bar detection, the Next platform with the Vantage sensors offers multiple applications, including uses with adaptive systems. You can use it with advanced dilemma zone and collision avoidance functionalities as well. The systems improve zone logic, phase input control, and greater data sets. The game changer It's essentially this makes it the only data, the only detector you would need. Uh, together with the Vantage Next platform, the Vector provides advanced individual lane detection, uh, delivers even more precise traffic data. Uh, the 16 radar zones are easily configurable and can be programmed to any of the seven zone types, including presence, delay, extension, count, pulse, CSO, and none. Uh, in addition, they can be combined with 32 video zones to provide a powerful data set for advanced ITS applications. So these include uh, long left turn pockets and queue detection. So this is going to make it an ideal solution to cover all the traffic management needs. Vectors offer uh, high precision uh, for dilemma zone detection by integrating the video field of view and radar sensing. Uh, enhanced information includes the number of vehicles, you can get the speed and the distance in user configurable zones that can be used for special applications. So the extended range of the advanced zones includes uh, enhanced count, speed, and occupancy measurements where data from advanced detection zones are desired. Uh, the vector can perform separate actions based on user-defined trip lines with minimum and maximum speed thresholds. Each trip line can be programmed to several different zone types, such as presence, you can do delay or extension, depending on whatever your need is for that. Uh, one specific need would be the total dilemma, dilemma zone coverage. Um, and this is a great usage of these trip lines. The vector provides the user with the ability to configure up to five trip lines within the radar detection zone as a specific, at a specific distance from the stop bar. A minimum maximum speed threshold can also be defined as well as the, the trip line width. So as a vehicle enters, each of these trip line areas, the vector determines if that vehicle is within the configured speed threshold. If it is, then the vehicle is most likely within the dilemma zone criteria, and the output is sent to the controller with the required extension timing for what that vehicle needs to reach the next trip line area. This continues through each trip line until the vehicle is slowed down and hasn't reached the next trip line in the required uh, time before the extension runs out, or the vehicle has gone fast enough to have made it through the yellow light before it's turned red. So combined with video detection area at the stop bar, use of the trip lines within the vector allows the user to create total dilemma zone coverage to ensure that high speed vehicles are detected and the proper outputs are sent to the controller so the vehicle can get through the yellow light safely or they're ensured to stop in time. Then you can see here on this graph, 
you know, as the vehicle's approaching the stop bar, the vector's gonna watch it enter each of these trip lines, and it's gonna uh, look at the speed of that vehicle. So if the vehicle is continuing to be above the minimum speed threshold, it's gonna continue to send extension times to that, uh, that controller so that it doesn't change the phase before the vehicle can get across that stop bar safely. Your detection hardware is only as good as your algorithms behind it. ITERIS has been constantly evolving the algorithms to better track vehicles, bikes, and peds. Their systems are now able to learn the backgrounds to better differentiate moving objects for more accurate detection. Uh, this has also led to motion tracking, allowing ITERIS to track objects as they move across the field of view. This is used for vehicles, but it's also used for pedestrian tracking. So the system not only counts your peds, but it'll tell you how many were traveling from left to right, or right to left, and it'll even tell you how fast they're moving. I mentioned the enhanced algorithms because they've recently put out an interesting solution to detection on span wire. The ITERIS smart span is specifically designed to provide accurate detection while being installed on span wire, where the camera was you know, likely to sway and rock with wind. It works by using registration zones that the user set up. So essentially these are easy to find features in the field of view that don't move, so totally static. Uh, in this picture, you can see that they're picking the corners of these lanes. Um, it then tracks the movement of these zones frame by frame, and they can measure that and allow the same movement to the digitally applied detection zones in those areas. So this means that as your camera moves, your detection zones are actually gonna stay in place. So it's gonna continue to give you accurate detection. Petrax provides automatic counting, direction, and speed tracking of pedestrians within the crosswalk. Along, the collection, along with collecting this information with normal vehicle and bicycle detection, Petrax can provide discrete outputs when detecting pedestrians moving in the crosswalk. Numerous safety applications can be realized when connecting these outputs to traffic controllers or other devices. Uh, the Petrax feature is embedded within ITERIS detection algorithms, so you're not going to need to get any additional equipment for this to work. Uh, with count and speed data of pedestrians within the crosswalk, combined with the already available vehicle and bicycle counts, agencies are now, now have the necessary data to support enhanced safety initiatives. Uh, they can improve the funding applications and focus on specific multimodal roadway improvements. Petrax gives transportation planners and engineers a full view of the roadway usage and the ability to focus resources on intersections that require safety enhancements. Uh, with critical pedestrian data, the Petrax provides um, Agencies can better plan for intersection roadway improvements to enhance safety for vulnerable road users. So no longer are they only concentrating on the cars in the roadway, but they're able to help those that usually get left out of some of this data. Uh, Petrax works with your Vantage Next, your Edge 2, Smart Span, and your vector detection systems. Cyclists are becoming more prevalent across the country, um, and extra face time is needed to allow them to safely cross the intersection. When no bicyclists are present, that additional time is wasted, so that actually reduces the efficiency of your traffic network. And reclaiming the unused time can greatly improve traffic flow while still ensuring the safety of your cycling public. The smart cycle solution requires no additional detection systems or manual call buttons placed as a signal. Smart cycle combines video vehicle detection and bicycle differentiation in one. So multiple outputs allow precision cycle timing depending on whether a bicycle is present or not. So no longer are you gonna have to install timing into your controller that assumes bicycles are using it. You can make a difference. If there's no bicycles there, you don't have to add that timing. Uh, in this video, you can see that the bike detection zones can be placed uh, in any lane needed. Up to six of the zones can be used for counts. Uh, the, the bike detection detection works by varying, with varying light conditions and can still separate bikes from traffic and really congested intersections as well as empty ones like you see here. The Smart Cycle Bike Indicator is a perfect companion to ITERIS' Smart Cycle Video Detection System. It provides uh, confirmation of successful bicycle detection. So by providing confirmation of detection, bicyclists are no longer going to be crossing red intersections because they don't believe they've been detected. It's also becoming a growing issue in cities like Portland where we're seeing a very fast growth of bicyclists on our roads. The bike indicator also eliminates the need for a bicyclist to dismount their uh, ride to push the pedestrian butt walk button whenever they think they haven't been detected. So this is going to avoid you know, the hazardous safety condition of them getting off their bike in the middle of the road, uh, as well as the slowdown of traffic of them getting back on and, and getting going. This low-cost solution is the first of its kind. Uh, every assembly requires only two wires to operate with the provided illumination control module that goes in the cabinet. There's also an ambient light sensor to control the brightness of the indicator, to dim the light at night, and to maximize the brightness during the day so it can easily be seen. 
as you can see here in the video, uh, they like to mount it right by where the ped buttons are because it's right over the shoulder of the bicyclist as they pull up to the intersection. Um, it's clearly worded on the on the sign that comes with it, so people don't think that it's an actual button. Uh, it lights up really bright. We've installed some here in the Portland area. The installation was very smooth, really easy, and programming, programming it to uh, not just our Siemens controllers, but other controllers worked really well. Here's a quick look how cleanly the iTerris equipment can be installed into a 3.3x cabinet. Uh, by reducing the cabling needed for the system and consolidating ports, installing an iTerris detection system won't leave you with a super cluttered, messy cabinet. iTerris has developed a, a shelf mount CCU for agencies that use NEMA cabinets. Uh, the CCU comes in two or four sensor builds and doesn't require any processors at all as everything is actually built into this single unit. Uh, it's about four inches wide, uh, 10 and a half inches deep, and 10 and a half inches tall, so it's not going to take up a ton of your valuable shelf real estate either when you put it into your cabinet. So if you couldn't already tell, uh, Iteris is a data-driven company with turning movement counts, speeds, occupancy, ped and bike counts, and adaptive controls. Uh, they're at the intersection detection can prove engineers with a, provide engineers with a huge amount of data sets, uh, but you know, a good question that's left is what do you do with the data or how do you collect the data that's not just at a single intersection? So to get travel time and origin de destination data, agencies used to have to perform floating car studies or uh, roadside surveys. They actually still do perform floating car studies in some places. These could be inaccurate uh, because they could only be performed one or two days at specific times a day. And you have such a small sample size, it's hard to get a true understanding of what's going on in the roadway. In the last 15 years, technology has been developed that can capture travel times order to destination uh, data 24-7 without the need of expensive license plate reading cameras, uh, roadside surveys, or any more manual observations. So since 2008, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable devices have become widely used by the traveling public. You've got cell phones, which everyone has now, laptops, and onboard equipment in the vehicle that all give off radio frequency messages that advertise what's called their MAC address. And essentially what a MAC address is, is it's just a unique identifier for that specific device. Um, ITERIS's Vantage Velocity Unit takes advantage of this. It listens for these MAC addresses from the roadside or if you have it mounted at your traffic cabinet. Uh, each velocity reader senses a device's unique MAC address as they pass the reader station and transmits the time and location of this device to a central host system. As devices are detected at successive velocity readers, the host system calculates average travel times and speeds for that roadway or the segment and uh, the device specific network address of any of the individual uh, for this is totally anonymous. So you don't have to worry about it actually being related to the user. Um, MAC addresses read by the field units are not directly associated to those users. Um, they don't contain any personal data or information that could be used to track any of the users. And there is an option to have them uh, anonymized through encryption at the reader if the agency needs that. Since the adoption of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi technologies, several MAC address readers have come to market. Uh, these readers have been cost effective, especially when compared to hiring a consultant or paying employees to do floating car studies, but they did have some limitations. Uh, the goal of all these units was to capture the largest sample size available, considering that there's still only a portion of travelers who can be picked up using uh, MAC address readers. Older MAC address readers can only capture as many as eight MAC addresses in 10 seconds would often have to batch scan and process these MAC addresses. While processing and sending these addresses, the readers would not be able to scan for any new captures. So this commonly results in readers not reads being grouped with the same timestamp, thereby lowering your, your overall count ac or your overall accuracy of the system. Uh, in densely traveled areas, MAC addresses would even be missed due to the large amount of captures each unit would have to make in short amounts of time. So as that unit would be sending its batched data, it would be missing captures on that roadway. And this is especially problematic because the system requires matches to make these calculations. If a MAC is missed on either side of a segment, that vehicle is completely left out of your data set. By introducing uh, asynchronous I.O., ITERIS unlocked the ability for real-time MAC address reads that are continuously timestamped and sent for processing. This eliminated the binning of captures and allowed for a constant stream of highly accurate captures and matches. Uh, due to the nature of the beast, a single unit is not able to scan for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth frequencies at the same time. So it's gonna be up to the agency to decide which one they wanna sniff for. Uh, many other systems are restricted to just one read type. Some only doing Bluetooth while others can only do Wi-Fi. The velocity is really special in that instance because it's modular. So just by swapping out a little USB dongle, you're able to go from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth. Uh, 
Bluetooth is held in a much stricter standard than Wi-Fi. So one of those standards being that it has a high regulation of its advertising for its MAC address, and it has to do it once every tenth of a second. Uh, whereas with Wi-Fi, they can advertise at any time. It just kind of varies depending on the product or the manufacturer. Bluetooth also is a faster grab than Wi-Fi, meaning it can be collected by the velocity unit quicker. Uh, this is especially useful on high-speed roadways or dense roadways like a multi-lane highway. Bluetooth MAC addresses must stay the same. Uh, this is a big help when getting matches. Coupling this with consistent advertising and fast sensing, Bluetooth has a very high re-identification rate of about 90%. Uh, more matches means more data. This isn't to say Wi-Fi doesn't have its advantages. Wi-Fi devices are definitely more prominent <clears throat> and are more often cons constantly advertising their MAC addresses. So they may not be doing it at a regulated amount, but anytime your phone is outside of your house and it's not connected to Wi-Fi, uh, it's usually manufacturer standard that it's going to be searching for that Wi-Fi. Whereas Bluetooth devices are only gonna advertise when they're in the pairing screen looking for another Bluetooth device. Now that's just for phones. Uh, car stereo systems usually are advertising all the time. This is primarily a safety metric so that users aren't trying to go through pairing screens and all that stuff while they're driving down the road. So they are, they are a little bit different. Uh, with all this being said, you're going to have a larger sample size of individuals when you use the Wi-Fi. Uh, so if you're deploying velocity units in a less traveled area, or if you're putting them in an area where technological adoption rates may be a little bit lower among the public, uh, Wi-Fi would be a decent option to consider. Uh, one thing to know when you're making this decision is that now there are devices out there that can actually change their Wi-Fi MAC addresses uh, throughout the day, and this is called spoofing. And this makes it very hard, obviously, for these uh, velocity units to match their MAC addresses if that address changes uh, from one point to another. So if you have readers that are very far apart or if you're trying to do a citywide origin destination study, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using Wi-Fi. Um, Bluetooth readers are how I got started in the traffic industry about four years ago, so I'm a little bit biased. Uh, but I usually recommend using Bluetooth as it's proven to be more accurate. And uh, the previous issue of having small sample sizes compared to Wi-Fi is actually being fixed uh, as we speak. So Bluetooth Low Energy, originally branded as Bluetooth Smart, but changed to BLE in 2016, is a low energy addition to the Bluetooth family. Uh, BLE was originally made for novel applications in the healthcare, fitness, beacons, security, and home entertainment industries. Uh, the idea formed around lower amounts of data being transferred from one device to another, and this would allow devices to be made that could operate for up to like 10 years using a single coin cell battery, or devices that could be made smaller without sacrificing the battery life. Uh, the most notable adoption of this technology would be through wearables. So you see them a lot, um, all of your Apple watches or your smart watches, your Fitbits, and a lot of headsets these days are using BLE. Uh, but we're also seeing a huge growth in this in the automotive industry. Uh, one example would be BLE sensors in the tires of cars that are used for tire pressure gauges. Uh, BLE is made easily to connect uh, without, so you don't have to have that pairing screen to get into it, it's supposed to just connect right away. So this means that any BLE device is always advertising its MAC address. So no longer do you have that reduced sample size that you get with Bluetooth Classic, uh, and this is definitely gonna increase your match rates. And to kind of prove this, Iteris did a study. Um, here's the side-by-side -side comparison of the same section of road on the same day of the week, one week apart. Uh, the first week was just using Classic Bluetooth, and the second week that Velocity Unit was uh, upgraded with the BLE reader. Uh, this took your matches from 330 in a single 24-hour period to over 2,400 with around 200 matches an hour during peak times. So during peak hours, they're actually seeing more matches than they were during an entire day previously. As you can see, the sample rates are huge. Uh, they are topping out with Bluetooth Classic with a sample rate of about 13%, whereas with Bluetooth Low Energy, you're seeing sample rates up into the 60s, uh, averaging in the 30% during the heavier travel times, which makes that data a lot more viable and usable. Velocity units can be installed either standalone on poles with AC, PoE, or solar power options, or integrated into traffic uh, cabinets. The, uh, the cabinet units can be shelf or rack mounted and take up very little space. The antenna can be affixed directly to the top of the cabinet by either drilling a small hole in the top of the cabinet or agencies can actually run wires through the existing lift gears on the cabinet to the velocity unit. And then uh, Iteris has made down here in the left corner a special mount that utilizes those lift gear mounting locations. You can run the, ca the cable through and then attach or affix this antenna directly to the cabinet so no one can mess with it. Um, 
these velocity units, either, even though they can read uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, and Wi-Fi, it only requires a single omnidirectional antenna, and the read radius for each unit is about 300 feet, depending on the environment. ITERIS has some special antennas that can be uh, can be used for a more focused read range uh, in the direction that the user is interested in. This is especially useful when you're trying to capture travel times on a small road that may run parallel to a highway. Uh, this way you're not accidentally grabbing highway travelers, so you are looking at your data and it suddenly says you've got people traveling 80 miles per hour on a 45 mile per hour roadway. Um, this is also a really good uh, application when you're in commercial or shopping districts where there's large parking lots uh, with people traveling much slower in those parking lots you don't want them to spill over into your data as well so you can see that right up here on the left in the middle these little fanned antennas allow you to focus your read range of that device and uh, get more accurate selection of your data when needed velocity has multiple uh, multitude of uses you've got congestion mapping uh, you can provide travel times and speeds to real-time traffic information. So here in Oregon, we have a statewide um, trip check website that allows users to pop on real quick and see what the travel times are throughout the state. Uh, you can populate dynamic message signs with these. Uh, you have origin destination information. So this is one of the most common uses, uh, uses to update travel demand models or signal retiming. Uh, this has been a really useful tool for agencies that have large stadiums or special events in their city. Um, understanding the habits of travelers after these special events is vital. So here in Portland, we've got the Blazers and we've got uh, the Timbers, two very large, very popular sports teams. And when those games let out, or even before the games start, the entire traffic plan, the entire traffic movement in the city changes because people are trying to avoid the congested roadways or getting off of uh, Interstate 5 to make sure that they don't get stuck in line. And this puts a load on these intersections that previously it's not anticipated. So not knowing where these people are going means that you can't adjust your signal timing to, to make it work better. You can also use these to measure the impact of con uh, construction projects. So travel time function is obviously a really useful tool for getting before, after, or during information for changes you're making to your roadways. Uh, you can always make an educated guess as to what the impacts of your changes will be, but having ground truth data really helps you analyze the success of your approach or maybe reanalyze your approach altogether. All this information is easily accessed from the web-based Vantage Velocity user interface. Uh, users can easily set fil filters, change display options, and download the data. The system could have its very own presentation, so if you're interested in more uh, information on this, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to dive into this or potentially get you set up with a, a free demo in your city so you can see the data for yourself. So with all this data, it's important to have an easy and accessible way to view it. Vantage Live is an easy-to-use web-based data service that allows users to view intersection activity by automatically collecting and analyzing vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian data. Vantage Live is the first service of its kind to simplify the process of presenting turning movement count data and has the potential to replace most, if not all, temporary data collection efforts. Uh, utilization of cloud-based infrastructure, Vantage Live automatically provides regular updates without any effort from the user. Uh, data from iTerrace's Vantage platforms is collected and sent securely to the cloud. Information can then be viewed by a web browser by multiple agency personnel. Uh, Vantage Live provides a robust data set that can be used for signal timing optimization. Users have the ability to generate both common UTDF data and peak hour summary reports with peak hour factor calculations. These reports provide detailed information about turning movements and departing data that will quickly allow engineers and planners to optimize signal timing that was previously done with time-consuming manual report generation. You can quickly view the most recent traffic volume on one easy to use uh, dashboard. You can download daily, weekly, or monthly graphs by intersection to view detailed multimodal volume. Uh, each cloud ba being cloud-based means the Vantage Life system can store decades worth of data for your agency, and they can easily make that data uh, available to create charts or graphs for their users. Um, all the collected data can be downloaded in Excel formats, CSV, chart images, JPEG. You can even do PNG files or UTDF uh, synchro data sets. Vangelize comes with Next and Edge uh, product integration, so there's no need to update your older iTerrace equipment to take advantage of those site services. You just have access to a powerful dashboard map and communications page to give a fast and complete view of intersection status activity with just a few clicks. 
Uh, Vantage Live also allows for multiple user profiles with different levels of access. So if an agency would like to share their volume counts or turning movements data with a consultant, they can easily create a read-only profile for them and give them access to all the information they could need without needing to worry about punching a hole in their firewall or setting up a separate VPN for them. Uh, Interagency cooperation is also made easy when neighboring cities are able to access and share each other's data and work together for a more cohesive travel network across agency lines. Venge Live allows users to organize signal timing by being able to quickly pull and view peak hour calculations and summary reports. And like all the data in Vantage Live, these reports are readily available in Excel, CSV, or UTDF synchro formats. And this is just a quick view of what that looks like when you export to like a CSV file. It's still really organized, really easy to read. Uh, here they've got, it looks like the AM peak going from 7 AM to 10 AM. And you can see each movement counts. So you've got all of your phases and then your left, your throughs, your rights, and then your totals uh, in 15 minute bins. So next with data. Um, for over a decade, municipalities around the country have received an F in traffic monitoring portion of the National Traffic Signal Report Card. This is primarily due because to lacking rich data sets from the intersection with limited tools and resources for collecting the data. Uh, without this data, agencies have had to depend on routine maintenance and reports from the general population to tell them if the signal hardware was malfunctioning or if traffic just wasn't moving as smoothly as it could. High resolution data was pioneered by Purdue in 2005, allowing to log data from the controller 10 times a second. Data wasn't initially avail available to be communicated remotely. Uh, you actually still had to go to the controller and manually collect it. Uh, but with this data, opportunities were abundant, and it was now time to find the best way to interpret and use this data. ITERIS has been involved with SPM activities since 2016, and SPMs are signal performance measures. They've installed and configured an on-premise SPM solution for the City of College Station in Texas, uh, the Tex.Paris District, uh, City of Arlington, and Tex.Fort Worth District. ITERIS has created the very own SPM tool uh, that was literally created by traffic engineers for traffic engineers. And this analyzes and visualizes traffic controller and detection data to help agencies operate and maintain their traffic signals more effectively and proactively. So you have the data there, you just need some way to use it, right? ITERIS SPM does not require central traffic management software. All you really need is a Linux board controller that provides high resolution data. So that's the ability to collect data every 10th of a second. It's rare anymore to see agencies purchasing non-Linux board controllers. Uh, you do need some Ethernet connectivity, be it fiber, Ethernet over copper, or wireless. And then detection is a big part of this. Uh, it could be video, radar, or even loops. But the more you get, the more you have, the more you'll get. Uh, ITERIS SPMs are third-party and completely agnostic, so they can work with agencies with different controllers and different central systems or multi-agency partnerships. Right here's the ideal detector setup for SPMs. Uh, detector location is key for producing the data needed for SPM data and visualizations, uh, and each detector needs to be placed on its own channel. So SPM only knows if the detector channel is on or off and doesn't care what type of detection is being used. However, it does care where the detection is placed. SPM is going to look for detectors on these three locations. So you've got your advanced detection, approximately about 400 feet or farther back, and this is going to give you your coordination diagrams or your arrivals on green. Your stop bar presence, it's going to give you your phase termination with uh, phase termination unnecessary wait times and green utilizations, and then your stop bar count detectors. So these are after the stop bar, and these are going to give you your clearance interval activities and your turning movement counts. What's interesting is all of these things can be found using the vector. The vector will give you your advanced detection, it'll give you your stop bar presence, and it'll give you your stop bar count. So one detector to get you SPMs is a pretty good deal. ITERIS SPM is chock full of data visualizations. Uh, this is going to be tailored to the needs of each agency. You've got your coordination diagram. This is going to allow you to evaluate and prove signal synchronization. Um, you've got your preempt and transition. So this is going to allow you to see how much time your signal is being uh, spent in transition or how many preempt calls are going through. It's a very good way to understand if you may have a problem with one of your uh, preemption devices or if you've got a stuck PED button. Uh, you've got your phase termination summary your clearance interval activity. Um, you can get your 15 minute continuous counts by seeing your turning movement counts, uh, phase termination details. So you'll know if you're accurately using your time uh, and know why your phases were terminated e each moment of the day. And you've got your unnecessary wait times. That one's actually my favorite because you know I think it's a good 
scientific theory that time actually slows down if you're sitting at an empty intersection at a red light. So SPMs will actually tell you how much time vehicles were sitting at opposing phases without getting that green light. And that's where complaints come from. That's where you're gonna get calls from uh, the public. Something we pride ourselves in here at Western is a highly skilled technical support team with a vast history of experience. ITERIS has really added to our ability to support our customers by providing in-person training to agency staff. Uh, they have a compact detection emulator that can be brought into the shop or into a conference room, and this can allow technicians to get hands-on training uh, with the ITERIS product. So instead of having to read a manual or just look at a training presentation or learn it in the field, we can actually take them aside, sit them down with the hardware, plug into it and have them actually set up these detection zones and understand why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, this has been a huge help with a lot of agencies who are new to this hardware, as well as just getting people up to date on some of the changes that we've made. And with that, I think I've covered everything iTerris. Uh, just to reiterate, this was a, a general cover of everything that iTerris uh, offers. You know, we're going to have a SPM webinar, I believe, coming up in the coming weeks, so be on the lookout for that. But if you have any interest in any of these individual detectors or any of the software, please reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me an email. I'm always happy to help. Uh, and with that, I, I'll throw it back to Connor. All right, thanks, Jason. We'll get going on the, the Q&A process. So if you do have any questions um, and haven't already uh, chatted them in, use the, the chat feature within your GoToWebinar toolbar and we will uh, answer them. So had a couple come in for you, Jason, um, while you were speaking. And the first one is, does iTerris offer any trade-in opportunities? Oh, that's a good one. Yes, absolutely. iTerris has trade-in opportunities for cameras as well as for their velocity units. So uh, definitely, if you have any old gear, if you're looking to try out some iTerris stuff, uh, reach out to me and we can, we can see what we can do for you. Cool, and then the next one is, can I stream video from iTerris cameras back to my TMC? Uh, yes, yeah, and that's actually quite common. I know that in Pocatello, Idaho, uh, Mike's actually streaming from many of his iTerris cameras back to his TMC. But yes, you can do that with your uh, optical iTerris detectors, as well as I think I mentioned with the radius, it has a camera built into it. So even though it is a radar detector, you can take that video from that, that camera in there and stream it at your TMC as well. Looks like this is the last one. Does the information captured by Velocity Units get sold to any other companies? Ah, that's that's a question I'm used to hearing. Um, no, iTerris does not resell any of that data. Uh, there are some other uh, companies out there that offer these products that do resell that data to places like here or to Waze. Uh, iTerris does not. iTerris will allow you to control the data that you're collecting on your roadways. Now, if you want to do something with it after that point, that is absolutely up to you. Great. That looks like all the questions we got today. So thank you, Jason. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a, a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.